Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time where we take you through the pages of a national daily, as we call it, off the press. And we'll be having great insight into the big stories making the rounds on our, on our dailies this morning. We have a guest joining us via Zoom, Tunde Kolawale, a legal practitioner. Tunde, it's good to have you join us. Good morning, my sister. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Uh, are you probably somewhere around the Eagle Square now? Well, not really, but I was monitoring the news via television and radio channels throughout the night as well. All right, that's on a lighter note. Let's start off with the Daily Independent newspaper. APC delegate elect presidential candidate. That's what you find on the Daily Independent newspaper. And how Nigeria can save poultry industry by association. Our shootings, WHO to support FMC on door government. You don't need medicine if you eat right navdak tells nigerians that's cool and uh, just before we move away from that another header says adebutu bala mba 23 pdp guba candidates get certificate of return court case still uh, stall kanu and eboy court nullifies eboy rescheduled pdp primaries and declares od guba candidate the FCC official storm APC convention and Owo massacre. Akira Dolu releases figure of casualties, vows to hunt down perpetrators. Jigawa APC delegate dies in Abuja. That was also one of the highlights of the presidential primaries. Very sad and unfortunate incident. But that's the much we can take this morning on the Daily Independent newspaper. All right, let's move over to the next newspaper. Of course, um, we have The Guardian this morning on the program. Um, not too much uh, as usual, the focus and attention on the activities right there in Abuja, the Eagle Square, where the ruling party, the All Progressives Congress, is having its presidential primary. Maybe that gives us um, uh, some indication as to where the state of journalism in Nigeria is today. Yeah, there's a lot going on that can still be written about. But it's just a front page. Consensus fails as 14 aspirants on ballot of APC presidential ticket. Uh, Akpabio Amoso, Faimi, four others stepped down for Tinubu. Oshibajo defies pressure to step down for Tinubu. Buhari rallies support for candidate with best chances. Tinubu pledges to unite Nigerians, tackle insecurity. I didn't come this far to chicken out, Bello insists. Onu decries marginalization of Indigo. Lawan seeks delegate support, says parliamentarians make the best leaders. Hire me, but fire me if I fail, Amishi tells delegates. Bakari leads delegates on moments silence for our um, victims, insists on not stepping down. EFCC officials storm Eagle Square. Uh, right, uh, we'll look at more of the stories coming on that front page. 22 confirmed dead in Ondo church attack. As UN Secretary General, others condemn killings. See, really sad one. 600 million persons fall ill. 420,000 others die globally from toxic foods. IPOB raises the alarm over alleged plan to seize guns in Southeast. An MKO's son, Kola, pledges commitment to nation building. This is after he emerged uh, presidential candidate of one of the political parties. Mark Inde announces Bayo Lawau as running mate for 2023 governorship polls. Uh, are the headlines on the front page of The Guardian. Time to bring in to Nicola Wale, our guest analyst for this morning. Um, to Nicola Wale, the big one, the All Progressives Congress um, <laughs> presidential con uh, primary, or what they call the special convention holding right there, the Eagle Square in Abuja. Um, your thoughts on, on all the paper has summarized, or the papers have summarized the speeches by all the aspirants. And the fact, I think, the Guardian's focus is uh, on that the consensus arrangement failed or the consensus plan failed. Um, the president's clarion call was not heeded, and it was everyone going for broke, 14 of them. Well, uh, you and I will remember that... Um before the convention eventually began, 
There was so much anxiety in the land. All of us uh, who are not even politicians were due to what is going to become a great issue if they were able to get their acts together. But surprisingly, they were able to weather the storm, and most of them behaved like a gentleman. They attended the convention to select the presidential candidate, eventually it took place without any major recourse. The only recourse I could see was when uh, the vice president, Professor Yemi Oshibato, arrived at the convention draft and they uh, was going around to greet the delegates. The delegates from local states, other than chair, the vice president, they booed him. While the big state delegates who were supporting him, they held him and they were shouting, he has won, he has won, he has won. And then, of course, too, you will see that when he had stood up to deliver his uh, speech, uh, he nearly fell down, and he told us that there, there was tremor in his two hands and all that, which might be signs of a Parkinson's disease. Well, um, Parker is like the clergy that he, he decided to remember all those who fell. And the Catholic Church in um, in uh, war. Well, the truth of the matter is that uh, the APC convention has been held, and delegates have had the opportunity to cast their vote. It is our hope that the first winner will win this election. Somehow, too, you will saw good organization. The whole thing was a carnival-like, just like uh, it was during the CPP convention. This is a sign of maturity, which will encourage all the politicians, whether they be in the ACT, whether they in the CDC, to throw the path of peace. The era of wielding cutlasses, markets, and guns as convention grants, as premiums for voting for candidates for flag era, should be a thing of the past. 22 or there are about years since we started this policy. But tragically, I never saw uh, any of the candidates, maybe I care for the leadership at all. Clearly, I like the direction which they want to take Nigeria to. Most of them in their cities were too afraid to bruise the egos of President Mohamed Buhari, so they managed to catch up the fundamental issues at the government of the country on the subject. And all of them went to help to start praising President Mohamed Buhari for a job well done, and that they were co going to continue on the path in which is leading the country to. As you ask yourself, what is the good path that President Mohamed Buhari could be said to have led the country? We have monumental insecurity in our hands, unemployment at the city's percent, food insecurity is shining up in the face, the infrastructure has been as deplorable as it was when he came into power. Uh, about seven years ago. All right, Tunde. Yeah. All right, so um, um, let's quickly look at the Nigerian Tribune this morning. All right. Presidential primary APC convention suffers hiccups voting drags. Uh, that's boldly written on the Nigerian Tribune. Now you have delegates from only three states had voted as of 3.52 a.m. I mean... Uh, up until uh, this moment, I'm sure that voting is still going on. Akpabio, uh, Amoshu, Fire Me, Bankole, others step down for Tunubu, Nicholas, uh, Felix steps down for the Vice President, Osibajo. The best doesn't have to get the prize, Adamu is quoted. Governors gang up against me, Yahaya Bello alleges. And uh, these are some of the writers you find this morning. Don't let PDP drag Nigeria backwards, Buhari tells APC delegate. Or what? 22 dead, 52 in hospital. Akeri Dolu is quoted on that, verifying the figures or the casualties. Attack will be thoroughly investigated. The IGP is also quoted to say that. Makinde picks Bayo Lawal as running mate for 2023 elections. Fulani attack, I, didn't, I don't need your prophecy, Soludo replies Catholic priest. 
tension as Okada riders go on rampage in Lagos. And we just come down underneath uh, below the uh, front page of the Nigerian Tribune. Breakthrough for cancer treatments as U.S. drug trial records 100% success. And DSS rescues abducted Kanwe, PC senatorial candidate's mother in Jigawa. Universal basic education and marks 2 billion naira for 2022 nationwide schools personnel audit. The headlines you have this morning. But let's start off with the um, away from the APC primaries and all of the concerns. The tension as Okada riders go on rampage in Lagos. And we're talking about that clash that happened yesterday in Idiaraba. What are your thoughts? What can we do at this point in time? Well, uh, in terms of the difficult for the government to enforce the ban on Okada riders in Lagos for so many reasons. One is constitutional and the other one is self-inflicted injury. The constitutional issue is this. What uh, government is supposed to ensure that people have a means of livelihood and most of the people that will find riding the Okada today it is because they want to be able to earn a living. So when you deny people the opportunity to earn a living, they are likely to put up a very, very simple system. That is what we are seeing um, uh, in Kiaraba, in Lagos uh, yesterday, and the day before. Furthermore, you and I know that under our constitution, you cannot restrict any Nigerian citizen from moving from one part of the country, either to settle, or to work, or to do business. When you do that, or any government that does that, is likely like to incur very, very serious liability in terms of infringing on the freedom of movement of uh, Nigerian citizens. Furthermore, you and I do know, the Okada riders are created, not also by politicians, each time there has been an election, the APC especially will mobilize the Okada riders to vote for them. They give them face caps, they give them t shirts, they give them cash elements. Now that they have become a menace, it will be difficult. But the same people have always supported them. But the same people have always used them during the election. But the same people want them to vote for them. When the election comes in 2023, to really put the foot down and say it's something out or taking out all the Okada riders uh, all over the place. Furthermore, you and I do know that um, the Okada rider issue is also very complex. So they extent that the National Union of Road Transport Workers, the Road Transport Workers Union, you know, and some of these allied uh, transport uh, unions you have all over the places and all that. Live on the proceeds that they get from the Okada. They run their union through the proceeds that they get from the Okada. And uh, if that is that, we also know that most members of the transport union are card carrying members, especially of the APC as a political party. And it has always been said, guys, without member, when there are issues, that the transport union are critical stakeholders in the APC, for example and most of the political parties in particular. And besides the transport, you know, the money that the Okada, that the union collect from the Okada riders is not just meant for the unions alone. With due respect, the police is in a leg, Patrick or Shia in it. It has also been a leg that the community leaders, the authors, the obese and the ballet, they also partake in this thing. We have also been taught that some of these funds go as far as being used to power, to fund the different political parties. Not too long ago, a, a premium time published a scattering report that in Lagos alone, that you know makes as much as 250 billion uh, on an annual basis, which is enough money to fund the budget of six states in Nigeria. Before now, all these things have been going into politicians, individual violence, and community, community leaders, and union leaders' uh, pockets. So, this, this is the situation of things. 
How do you now wake up overnight and say that you are finding this thing? I suspect, or I am to say, there's going to be very, very serious resistance from those who live on the buses that they get from the Okada as a means of transportation. But the hiccups in the APC, where it should be expected, it was a behemoth, a mammoth crowd. You have uh, three delegates from 774 local government from all over the country. And uh, the convention that ordinarily should have started very early, I think about six or four in the evening, didn't quite begin until about 10 at night. So the lateness that we are seeing in the delegate casting their vote uh, for their respective uh, uh, candidates to the entity. I think what is important is that uh, they have been able to maintain the peace, and we have also seen some modernity in the way and manner that they are casting their vote. If they are able to maintain this to the end of the convention, till the candidate emerges and all that, well, we should give them kudos. And then we should also pray that the first candidate should emerge from the convention of the APC, who will be able to square up with the candidate of the PPP. The problem of the country is a very, very serious problem, economically, socially, politically. It is only the best hand among the different political class that choose get the flag to run for the election. Unfortunately, with all the candidates that I saw in the APC, I'm not too comfortable with any of them. I don't see any of them that can really take Nigeria out of the woods, out of the economic quagmire that we have in the country today. For me, all the candidates are part and parcel of the problem. And if they are part and parcel of the problem, I don't see them suddenly becoming the solution overnight. Which is our massacre. It is a tragic. No one could expect that kind of a thing will happen in the 21st century. That in broad daylight, certain persons will march openly to a church and where uh, worships are taking place and start uh, killing innocent people, including children. It was a gory fight that I saw children throws being slaughtered, old women throws being killed, and they all manner of atrocious I mean, atrocities from co 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 I mean, um, carried out in that church. I suspect that the visit, the horrendous visit that was made to a war, may have been targeted at a governor Craig You know, he was one of the people that first came up with the um, with the Amotekun uh, course. And then the Amotekun course has always been very, very active in the Undo State, such that they are able to reduce the level of criminality that is taking place in the forest and around some of these uh, towns and cities in Undo State. And you know, I think the law is from, uh, is from a war. Secondly, too, he's been very rancorous and loud about the need for the southern Nigeria uh, to get the presidency from 2023. This may be a way to punish him or to show him that certain person has the capacity to clip his wings. But more importantly, I am disappointed that the whole community was a very large town that when those attack was when the attack was taking place and when the people were getting up from the place, that the community didn't rally around. To give the people who came to do to carry out that atrocity a chase and then hunt them down in whatever forest they may have um, uh, set their mean in the air to. To the best of my knowledge, or was dressed with a lot of very good on that. They also have the OPC in there and then retired soldiers, retired policemen. There are also some police stations around the vicinity of the church. We had that took to place. What were these people looking? When they think like this is happening, what security agency was supposed to do is to seal off all the roads that lead in and out of the war. And then the prime my materials in there. And then the hunters will also go into their room and whatever they can lay their hands on, whether they be gang guns, whether they be cutlasses and knives, and give the people a good meal in the church, they run for their mother. This they have been hunted down, 
Like the animals are there, I am sure it will send a proper signal to whoever may be planning in future to also carry out that kind of horrendous um, atrocity on any community in Nigeria. Our people are too docile, they are always too afraid, they are always too scared, they don't want to risk their skin. That people will be killing your kids, men, and then you start to go and hide under your bed and allow them to kill them. I don't work away like that. I feel disappointed with your community in their approach or in their reaction to what has happened in their community. All right. Uh, uh, to Nicola, let's quickly move back to the, um, uh, the first paper, which is the Daily Independent we looked at today. And uh, 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 departure from the politics of the day uh, with the Nigerian... Uh, poultry industry uh, in focus. This headline, How Nigeria Can Save Poultry Industry by Association, and the, uh, the paper uh, talks about uh, this uh, idea to save the poly poultry industry um, from what it's currently facing. Um, uh, it says that uh, this is definitely not a good time for the most farmers in the country, especially those in the poultry industry as they express worries that if nothing is uh, cogent is done to salvage the sector, it may be difficult to salvage it. Now, for some years now, the paper says, farmers have lamented the various challenges the industry face, and there seems to be no meaningful response from, from the government, they said. Uh, the farmers' the paper continues, have identified some of the challenges, which according to them are too numerous, ranging from high cost of grains uh, and feed costs to poor product, product pricing, uh, due to the perishable nature of um, the product. Um, others are poor disease management and control. You have avian influenza, poor bed genetic potential, inaccurate industry data, uh, poor regulation, uh, amongst others. So over to you, Chundukulu Um These obviously are not the best of times for the poultry industry uh, in Nigeria, especially uh, with the issue of the cost of feeds, feed. Uh, is what is what, yeah. uh, yes, o over to you. Honestly speaking, what is happening in that sector is embarrassing. It is unexpected because if we are a nation that plans, that could anticipate problems when they are about to come or when they are happening, it would have been able to do a lot in that area. And you also know that poultry is a very good and very vital source of protein. You eat the chicken, you also get the egg in there. Most of the conventional industries depend on the egg from the food industry. So the truth of the matter is, with all the challenges that the farmers are having, accessing or getting to their farm in northern Nigeria and then in southern Nigeria, they are unable to grow corn, maize, and some uh, share beans, and some of these other uh, farm products that are used to produce the poultry feeds. Furthermore, too, the cost of a grain has gone up beyond the reach of those very poultry farmers. I mean, the producer of uh, animal foods, uh, chicken foods. Again, I'm also told that I've learned that ordinary medicine that the poultry animals will require to maintain good health and grow healthy are also very, very expensive now. How do we now solve this problem? We need to be able to get the farmers back to their farm so as to be able to produce the ingredients for producing the poultry feed. We also require to subsidize the cost of importing the drugs and the poultry animals require to be able to live a very healthy life. It's a very, very tricky situation. Tricky in the sense that, except we solve the problem of insecurity, except we're able to get the farmers back to the farm, except we're able to bring in drugs and vitamins that the birds require for healthy growth very cheaply or subsidized, the challenges in that area is never likely to be solved. We are actually able to address it. Millions of Nigerian children who read agricultural science, who read animal science, who read the soil science, we could drag them, we could encourage them, we could empower them 
to go back to farm and then begin to rear poultry uh, animals as a means of occupation, as a means of creating jobs for themselves. Without being able to do this, I am sure, or I can say categorically, that we might not be finding light at the end of the tunnel. Security is very key to solving this problem. All right, um, let's quickly move away from that now. And, and uh, so looking at the front page of the Nigerian Tribune, it talks about breakthrough for cancer treatment as the United States drug trial records 100% success. Well, that's a beautiful day. Yeah, you and I will know that all over the world, cancer kills millions of people. And there are all sorts of cancers. Skin cancer, cervical cancer, breast cancer, lung cancer. Our illustrious in Canipa when died of a throat uh, cancer. The wife of uh, General uh, Ibrahim Babangida, a lovable lady, died of cervical cancer. And so many other persons. And thank God, the scientists in other parts of the world are not resting on their own. Unlike our scientists around here, who seems not to be doing any research in finding solutions to some of these deadly diseases. If these people are able to come up with this um, new way of treating cancer, like they have done for cervical cancer, and some of these other cancers that I'm aware, they now give injections or they now give patents that kind of limit the rampaging nature of the different cancers that we have, especially those cancers that affect women. It will be good for humanity as a whole, and then we should all approach. Tunde Kola Wale, quickly, because yeah. we're, we're, we're just uh, going right. to round this, right. round this uh, right. off now. Uh, yeah. But can you also share your thoughts on this, where you have um, NAVDAC saying that you don't, need to, you don't need medicine if you eat right? I mean, this is actually a statement to Nigerians. NAVDAC is saying you don't need medicine if you eat right. No, that is not true. That's a very easy, lazy, pandemic um, approach of uh, looking at it. So it's called, yeah, pre like it's, it's called preventive there medicine. Some, no, there are some diseases that are not amenable to food treatment. i give you an example. Those who have bone injuries, those who have things like cancer, those who have a uh, heart problem, I'm not too sure there's any amount of food that you can begin to eat or consume or a diet regime that you can maintain that can heal you of some of those difficulties, duplicating uh, health challenges that I've mentioned. Autism is there, mental illness is there, and so many other kind of diseases that are not amenable to just merely living on a regime of vegetable or vitamin or what have you. The truth of the matter is that uh, a combination of medicine, whether other or whether the orthodox Western medicine, and good food are proven to be very efficacious to really treating or managing whatever diseases people may have. So it's wrong for uh, NAVDA to start uh, misinforming the public as the how they should go about uh, treating or managing whatever health challenges that they may have. Let us be honest with ourselves. We need a combination of uh, things to be able to manage some of these very, very serious uh, and diseases. All right. Um, Tunde Kolawale, thank you very much for your time. I would have wished you had more time to take um, uh, your thoughts on someone who is your... Uh, I wish we would have had more time to take your thoughts on other stories, um, of course, uh, uh, making the rounds in the papers. Uh, but, of course, we don't have all the day. The day. Uh, but I want to thank you very much for joining us and look forward to having you join us again. For having me. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we have more discussions coming up right here on uh, The Breakfast. We'll be back after this break. Please stay with us.